Do not take product if you are hypersensitive. that it's back to me now right. like when, when you were done i was like shit oh shit we, i've been getting okay these are our top movies like, okay yeah. all right so i do know how like progressively this podcast gets louder uh, <laughs> i should i should just stand over here and do it can you hear me still i bet you can <laughs> um anyways well, so i don't have to we are on our this. now this is the top round this is the top this is our top movies so i picked so my last one was arrival so I've seen this. I saw this in theaters. Can I just say one thing? Mm-hmm. Good luck explaining this movie. <laughs> it's actually a alien hands. It is actually a uh, uh, either a sequel or a prequel to The Leftovers, <laughs> according to Reddit. Okay, leave your anyway, fan theories at home. I'll yeah. leave my fan no. fair. So, okay, do you like aliens? I haven't met one that I don't like. <laughs> I haven't met one that you don't like. <laughs> But, so, I thought, you know, I'll give everyone a fair try. I don't okay. know those Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> what? In See, San Diego. <laughs> Mexicans? Mexicans. Uh, oh, Mexican. I like how many Mexican. accents, uh, like, offensive <laughs> accents we can I have. know. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm mistaken as a My comment one. section is going to be uh, roaring. People always think I'm Chinese. <laughs> it's a weird one. It is, and it gets way more than it should Right. I see more than anyway. Anyway, please. Okay. Okay. So arrival. Okay. I'll just give the. I'll just give the very simple synopsis because. So Amy Adams, is just I living guess. in an apartment with big windows, lots of windows. <laughs> Looking out on the sea. <laughs> lots, maybe, maybe, lots of natural. Yeah, Boston. it is. Yeah, she has a really great view. No, but she's uh, some sort of professor at a university, I believe, teaching linguistics. So. From what I understand about the profession, it seems pretty boring. Like, you could yep. probably either be a professor or you would just work some sort of office job Is where you a, like a research. Thing? Well, it's like, uh, like, it's like, a, like studying this. Sh- like, people assume, like, linguistics people, like, professors or whatever, understand, like, every language or whatever. Mm. can speak anything. They can't. They, what, what they can tell you is, like, language structure. Um, like how like you this know, language like, is built like this you know and like it's like yeah. structured like a tree is like blah, 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 blah. Uh, and they can break it down and probably analyze so, it yeah and like it's like this is like a plot like a, <laughs> <laughs> a place you've seen you know like a language or whatever Burns. they would have been good to have in the lion movie mm. right yeah and his not knowing how to pronounce his, his own name, name. um but she's she's just going. She and the thing is, ugh, it's hard for me to talk about this without giving away spoilers. But there's little flashbacks here and there, and you're like, oh, this. Like you just kind of assume she lost a kid, like based on the flashbacks. Yeah, you're like, she's oh, like she a, someone who like she lost she lost a kid. Yeah. That sucks. So she goes to work and she's just like, oh, I'm just gonna turn on my projector, blah blah blah, and teach my class of five people. Yeah. And then they're like, by the you, way, you're Amy Adams. <laughs> Uh, it was flawless like thought, really yeah. like it's amazing I thought Amy Adams was in the room <laughs> I, that's what I thought too like, I, I really did I, I was blown away anyway she turns on the projector she... <laughs> <laughs> I guess they pronounce that word <laughs> god um yeah so the, so the students are just like kind of bored and, and she's like and they're all on their cell don't phones. Don't like the projector? <laughs> they don't like their... <laughs> oh, I can't. You're so pleased with yourself right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even into the aliens yet. Okay, okay, There's okay. aliens? Shh. I forgot okay. that you mentioned about aliens. Okay, so, okay. No, I'm getting fucking serious here, guys. Okay. Um, so... The, the kids are like, you should turn on the news. And then yeah. she turns on the news, and it's like, yeah, it. all these, there's 12 of these things that have come, which I thought they came from the sky, but then I rewatched it tonight. I think they come from the ocean. Nah, anyway. They come from the sky. 
Space mm. is not in the ocean. They, space not so the ocean these, so Jen, these egg things. These, they look like uh, um, Terry's chocolate orange. <laughs> <laughs> no, they look like the like thing the, Lady Gaga arrived in at the Grammys a couple years ago. She arrived in like this egg thing. Cool. Gross. So, Amy Adams is like, "What the heck?" And she goes home and whatever. And then she goes back into work the next day. And by the way, by the way, by the way, if aliens ever invaded. I would just oh, assume. Come on, leave your politics at the door. Didn't I you? would just assume everyone would get the day off work, right? Not Why? if you work retail, man. Yeah. They don't close for <laughs> yeah, if anything, you gotta like work, like come in and pay. <laughs> you gotta sell those yeah. extra. I definitely, like, I definitely they, would be at the restaurant. They'd be like, hey, Survival. people are coming in to watch the television. You need to serve them booze. Mm. Yeah. And then she goes into work, and then these people come to her door, and they're like, "We need your help figuring out what these aliens are all about. We need your help, like, kind of analyzing them and figuring out, like, why they're here." Kind of. Because she's like an like an expert of language structure, and they don't like understand. Right. She, I think it's like she has like uh, um, degrees. She might have. I think she might have a degree in xenomorphology or whatever. Who doesn't? I know, right? <laughs> but I mean, which is the weirdest fucking thing is that 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 is literally yeah. the. The study of like alien languages. Yeah, so. Which is like, how the fuck can you have a degree in something that you've never. It doesn't never, exist. It's like, it's this is know. what alien languages might look and like. That's, well, that's the thing. I don't know why. Like, like bloop lorp. They probably. They just. She was probably like one of the top people. <laughs> yeah. And she would, proves that. Would their point. So, like, if, anyways, yeah. Cool. So. They they show her like this audio clip, and they're like, "What do you get from this audio clip? Like, do, do you hear anything?" And she's like, "I don't really know. Like, I'd have to go there to find out." And then they end up bringing her to one of the sites where one of the spaceships is, and essentially the whole movie is her going up in these spaceships, kind of interacting with the aliens. And I wrote in my notes, sure. and I quote, "The aliens were meh. <laughs> they weren't even impressive at all. So what they looked like were black octopus hands." I already wrote down mermaids as soon as you said aliens. They didn't look like mermaids. No. I like how you're just projecting they, this, what you want them to look yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Like mermaids. They were... So it started off looking like two octopuses with big, long legs. And they would go in, and she was with uh, Hawkeye. Yep. Jeremy Renner. Yeah. It's a movie with Hawkeye. But no, sorry. Was she with the character Hawkeye? Because that would make this movie... So much You know what? Fucking yes. Yeah. Like, Thor's off world. Tony Stark is just like yeah. partying in Maui. Captain America yeah. is doing old timey shit. Yeah. And like we could get Hawkeye. Yeah. He's here to help you. Hawkeye's here. Yeah. Yeah. He fought the Centurion. I, mean, I just I, arrows and he fought I don't think I've seen him in anything else. Also, really? So it, that's well, impossible. no, but no way. That's impossible. Impo- um, mission. That's mission. That impossible. is mission. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mission Come on, you guys see the town. No. With his, that's Sorry. Corey just looked at me with Affleck. such heartbreak. It with was. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Just, he ditches all his friends. He's a total douche. No. He's a and he like turns around and shoots a cop with the gun. Well, and Renner he keeps does. having Renner sex does. with that girl even though he loves someone else. He's just a douche. Oh, even Ben Affleck. Just living his best life. But um, I like how the final round we're just trying to do right I know, I know. Anyway, I'm gonna sorry, have I'm gonna have literally four hours. Um It was probably a two parter, but anyway. It probably probably will be. Uh-huh. Um so so anyways, so Amy Adams is up there with Hawkeye. Yep. Just keep on with that. I'm calling Yeah, we'll just call him. And again, oh, by the way, I will add her name is actually Louise, and that's my middle name. Louise? And that yeah, and that means warrior. Right. And I just want to add that Sarah means princess, so I'm a warrior princess. My cat's name was Zena, and she was a warrior princess. Yeah. You know what, Sarah? They told me that Evan means young warrior, but <gasps> you know, it, it's, all, it's all bullshit because Evan just means John. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean it means? Okay, let's not yeah. get off on, on it. Apparently, Corey means God-fearing. Anyway, keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do fear God a lot. I do. So anyways, Jen, Jen. It won't be caught outside. We're bringing it back in. There's... Black eggs hanging out in the sky. So octopuses. Yeah. Black so they go up. They go up, guys. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. go up into this like spaceship. They go up into this spaceship, and their whole thing is just like they want to find out why these aliens are here. So they start to try to communicate with them. It's all like blue, blue, blah, blah. Yeah, and then they start like putting out these like ink lots, like. Little symbols. Like those things that are like, what do you well, feel when you look at this picture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of where, what they where, look like. Wow, they're kind of like octopusy, like Because they're yeah. squirting. They kind of like nipples. squirt into the air, like they project these like circles or whatever. Sign language and braille. 
Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. And so she starts analyzing this, and that's kind of what the movie is, and then you start to get into it. But the whole time she's having these, like, kind of flashbacks, and, like, honestly, like, the whole time I was just like, okay, like, these are, like, past flashbacks. Like, she lost a kid, and she's just depressed. And I just want to say, if you're linguistics... No, I'm saying what I thought. Okay. I guess that's implying that... Yeah. Ah, shit, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'll try to edit that out. Or just when you put the intro in this, be like, we're kind of saying that we're not doing spoilers. We're totally doing spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, so, so yeah, so you get the feeling that something has probably happened. Um, let me just revert to my notes here. Let's see. Um, yeah, and I, I do love Amy Adams in this movie. I mean, I love her yeah. in any movie, yeah. generally speaking. I am a big fan of Amy Adams. But yeah, I think yeah. that this, as a linguistics, was probably her most exciting day on the job. Because she's like, oh, I'm just teaching class, whoa, and whoa, now whoa. I'm analyzing aliens. Enchanted? She was thrown through, like, no, a as magical a ling- porter. <laughs> as, a, <laughs> as a linguistics yes. person. Yes. And I oh, you should mention also that, um, what's his name, uh, Forrest Whitaker was, uh, huh. was He's the, uh, was the colonel him. or whatever. Nice. He was, like, the military He's amazing. I, and I, I have a bit of a crush on him. Ghost dog. Yeah. Yeah. So it keeps you hooked, and you're just like, what the fuck? And I can't, like, I can't get into anything else without giving away spoilers, but mm-hmm. the end is great. Nice. Um, Can I bring up one yeah, fact? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jeremy Renner, who's Hawkeye, mm-hmm. got in a fight with Spider-Man. So there's the Spider-Man so there's connection. The Spider-Man connection. You, mean, you mean in the movie uh, Winter Soldier? Or, or uh, uh, oh, no, uh, Civil War. Civil War. Yes. So. Okay. All right. That's it. There's but a Spider-Man honestly, connection. So that's pretty much a game. I will right. say one thing that the aliens, I just thought were kind of disappointing. Because the, the best alien that there is, or monster that there is, is the chlorophyll monster. Which is... No. I'm just saying that I know Jen's disappointed because apparently they don't look like mermaids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Sarah, but the That's xenomorph wonderful. is the most, uh, like, Wait, successful that? alien. Oh, 100%. Stuff. It's one of the greatest. The alien from Alien. Oh, I haven't seen it. With, like, the... I haven't seen it. So you haven't seen, it, so you you haven't seen, seen the town or any alien? It had a thing that came out of its mouth. Yeah, and, like, little mouth legs. It's like, it's like, oh, it's like get back I, in there, little mouth. I'm I couldn't get, get, go upstairs by myself until I was about 20. Yeah, no, and Monster in the Closet was... A movie directed by James Gunn, who did Guardians of the Galaxy. Which is one of the best movies ever. Yes, definitely. Because Ben Affleck's not in it. Watch him I, you know yeah. what? <laughs> I, 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 would probably, I would probably have a romantic relationship with Chris Pratt. Uh, no, oh, Chris I, Pratt's next level. Like I Sam, would. Like, oh my gosh, yeah. As straight as I am, like, I, I just can't help but, like... As straight as you yeah. are, you'll bend for you Chris know, Pratt. Like, like, that smile, like... Uh, yeah. just like is he oh. on your reverse five? Uh, that should be just another podcast. Definitely improve it. Um, yeah, we'll do it. Anywho's, the, the movie wraps up very nicely, and I'll just, I'll be vague as fuck. I'll vague book. It's, it's kind of based around the idea of, like, if you knew your life was going to go in a certain way, would you still live it that way? Oh, oh. Yeah, so it's very philosophical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think you'll dig, like, the twist at the end. wine type Because I saw recently <laughs> Split, which is M. Night Shyamalan, and that, yeah. ending, and that ending was terrible, and Arrival blew Can it out of the water. I had that Split's not name it, nominated for an Oscar, so please don't talk about it. Uh, I won't talk about it, don't but I'll just say that the ending was disappointing. <laughs> ending was amazing anyway. I like the ending. Did you see it? Yeah, I saw it. Oh, okay. Well, let's talk later. Anyway, that's that's Arrival. Okay. Well, in a nutshell, I think this movie has everything you could possibly want. I yeah, except mermaid yes. aliens. I've got... Okay, the mermaids, I was a little disappointed to find out they're more, like, I wrote Oct- down black octopuses and hot guys with spaceships. Um, <laughs> there are ink blotches, flashbacks, and dead babies. And like, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No we dead don't, babies? Well, I, we don't I talk about that? will not confirm or deny. I didn't see this movie, we'll so I don't know if there's babies. anything that dead babies or not. Um, anyways, and big philosophical meaning at the end. So mm-hmm. I would probably see it just for fun. Funzo. Ooh, I hit that like with such Fuck yes. Fuck yes. All right. So now we come to what is, uh, I, I don't, I, 
I would take a separate bet on this, is going to be the best Oscar pick of the year. <laughs> um, like by Price Waterhouse Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. They are the people who determine oh. who wins what Oscar. I don't know that. Huh. La La Land. Mm. Holy fuck. <laughs> hey, did you, have you seen it yet? No. Okay. Um, that movie, from the very get-go, was fun. Fun? Fun. Like, the, it starts off with, um, a <laughs> typical San Diego, well, um, San Francisco, Hollywood, Hollywood, sorry, Los Angeles, traffic jam, you know, uh, which breaks out into a lovely, charming musical number. Are you being sarcastic? No! Nope. Okay, are you into musicals? No, but I'm not. It depends on the music. Like the music is like, it's 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 like because the whole thing, and I'll get into this. The music um, is just like so jazzy and mm. up tempo and just sort of yeah, like really get your toe tapping. Yeah, like real. I forget even what the name of the, I, for, I do forget what the name of that first song was, but like it's a great musical number. Probably not a good time that for the name of the musical number. But I never remember the name of the musical numbers. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I so I guarantee you it's also up for like best musical score, which it's going to win. Mm-hmm. Um, fuck um, yeah. I've heard good things. It might not win best song because there's a bunch of crazy competition in terms of best song for the year. But the musical score, absolutely 100%. La La Land, I'm calling it now. Also calling it for best picture. But, and I'll explain why. Um, Ryan got it, like it then pans to uh, Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone, Spider Man connection, Spider Man. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean about that. That's all right. Uh, you know, so um, you know, stuck in this traffic jam and fucking. Um, so Emma Stone is like an, an actress, or oh, sorry, she's a barista who's working on the set of a Warner Brothers studio, who is trying to make her way in Hollywood. As so many young women do. And she's a woman. <laughs> she is a woman. She's not Hillary Swanky. She's a woman. She's like, a woman. I got it. No, boys don't cry. Boys don't cry. She played a boy. Or a girl described. Uh, discussed. We're not trying to sell you on boys don't cry. Yeah. But don't I thought worry. that was a Amanda girl that lost her mind. No. no, don't worry. We're off top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So... Uh, is that girl interrupted? Amanda, are you talking about Amanda Vines? Vines? She played a boy. No. Oh, I think that's you're thinking of. No, no, that tw- was, you're thinking of the, that was the soccer one. Yeah, when she couldn't get on the team. Yeah. Yes! Which was is that? based off the, uh, the... Twelfth Night. Twelfth right? Night. The, yeah, the, yeah. The hang on, hang on, I got yeah. this. Um, and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get that's back to the I know, we really, <laughs> that... It, what a girl! Oh no, she's the man. She's the, she's man. the man. Okay, perfect. Sorry. She played her own brother. Also, probably should have got an Oscar. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a man to buy. That's why she lost her mind. Thank you, Oscar. What's she yeah. doing these days? Oh, anyway, sorry. Yeah, nobody can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sorry. So, um, so Emma Stone is, you know, like trying to like make her way as an actress, and like Ryan Gosling um, is. You know, and like it starts off like, and she's in traffic, and she's like, you know, on her phone, like, you know, like looking at shit, and like traffic's moving, and she's staying still, and Ryan Gosling behind her, like, blaring his horn at her, and like it's like, get the fuck out of the way, you know, like there's like people trying to go places, and he, you know, like she gives him the finger, and he gives her the finger, because like she's like just sitting in fucking traffic. You know. Very passionate about this traffic scene. Man, traffic is frustrating. It is. Keep moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, the flow of traffic you know, is like, like a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Like, I'm a You board. cause car accidents that way. Yeah. So, um, you know, like Ryan Gosling is, you know, and like you know, they have like encounters, uh, like uh, I think it starts off around Christmas time. And, uh, um, you know, she walks into this, like, bar, or this restaurant, uh, a little while later, you know, and Ryan Gosling is this jazz pianist who is, like, hired by this bar to play fucking Christmas songs, which, uh, if you... 
like the most the most like you know generic like uninspiring you know like mm. traditional wish like, you a merry christmas little, like you know it's like yeah. it's like you know like yeah. for jazz penis like that's like it's like well you might as well like ask me to like just fucking like hit my head with a pot like from the kitchen <laughs> like for all the actual musical integrity that it carries mm-hmm. understand frustrating yeah, for an artist uh now this film is directed and written by Jace um, Chazelle. I'm trying to remember his first name, Justin. I want to say, but he's the guy who did Whiplash. Oh, amazing! So, um, what's his name? Uh, J.K. Simmons plays the manager of this restaurant, and where he plays um, a jazz aficionado in Whiplash. A man who's so oh, passionate yeah. about music. Yeah. You know, like, he's, he's screaming at this kid or whatever. In this movie, he plays the almost the exact opposite, where he fucking hates jazz with a extreme passion. Uh, yeah, Damien Chazelle. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. So, it, and it, the music mm. was by um, Jordan Horowitz, I'm pretty sure. Justin Horowitz. Sure, Justin sure. Horowitz. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of cool. We're reuniting director and actor. I, oh my god. Also, Spider Man connection because he's oh, J. Jonah J. Jameson. Jameson. The best J. Jonah J- Jameson. The, the J. Jonah Jameson yeah. from Spider Man. Get me pictures of Spider Man. <laughs> you know, like, like, the best. I love that Spider Man's so entangled. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Like this tangled web you mean. <laughs> oh. You know, like, uh, so really, you need to watch the Spider-Man movies, is what we're talking about. I do yeah. like Spider-Man. By the way, I just, not to derail this, but I found my Spider-Man connection for both Hidden Figures and my last movie. So, oh, anyway, okay. Okay. just do your thing. Do your thing, both. I just wanted to see, like, the director that you just said. I didn't remember his name. I didn't even write down. But does he have, like, traffic things? Because he had a, a thing called Whiplash, and now he's they have Road Rage in this movie. <laughs> oh, and jazz. Apparently, he loves jazz and, and hates. Wasn't he in traffic. Juno? As the dad in Juno? Ju- no, yes, yes, yes J.K. Simmons was. Yeah, but he's not there. Like, a, but that was. Oh, right, right, right. That was the, yeah, so did code. something happen in his life with traffic? Maybe, and maybe. Rage. Like, I feel like. I, feel I, like know, I mean, the, the musical number was great jazz. But, um. Yeah, and like, and Ryan Gosling sort of like explained, and Rachel, or sorry, I almost said Rachel Gaddon. Um, Emma Stone in this movie, you know, she's all like, like, and she's like meant about jazz, and then her, um, Ryan Gosling sort of like, you know, is like trying to explain jazz and like his passion for it, and like how this, you know, like, like jazz is sort of like, you know, like music. You know, which you know, like, is lives and breathes art. You know, and like and musical intre- expression, like it's, it, and jazz is this beautiful thing. Like I, I feel that too about this music that like a lot of people don't really care about. Mm-hmm. But um, it starts off because like just or um. Ryan Gosling is such a huge jerk at the start of the fucking movie. Like, that that when I watched this movie, the person I watched it with said that, like, I don't get it. I'm just not into him. You know? And okay. how can I think any person not be into Ryan fucking Gosling, the most, like, downy, soft, charming, one of the hundred, like, top, like, Beautiful man of the world, and, you know, like I mean, I was all over to break her eye. I'm like, oh my god, right? <laughs> Those waves. I know. In his hair, in and his in hair, the on like the the sea had nothing on his I hair. Was like I think. Sidekick. I think oh, we have to break the, the rules yeah. for just a second because he was watching it with me. Yes, yes. Sarah was um, the, the the girl. Who I, I, think, I think we did break the yeah, rules by the rival because Evan are right. really just went in on a rival. I know, but I will say but. that, like, I, I, will, I won't take away from you, but I will say that I am a Ryan, Ryan Reynolds girl. Mm-hmm. And there can never be two Ryans. No, 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 no. It's just like I've never felt that. You can't same. deny that he is handsome okay. as fuck. No, no, it's handsome as fuck. But in this Got movie, it. in the beginning of this movie, before this they, in the beginning of this movie, they Most he was a did. jerk to her. So, 
Yeah, I was I just didn't. Dude, I was like, know, I was she like, she was in traffic, and not moving. He was justified to be in the dick yeah. for a while. Yeah, like the rules. It wasn't just that. Yeah. It wasn't just that they met a couple times, it's and true. he he didn't pay no mind to her. Yeah, he he gave her literally the shoulder the second time they ran into each other. Ooh. Like he like Which pushed I'm... her out of the way. You know, like he was cold. Uh, you know, but like. But as the movie progresses, you know, like, they fall in love through song and time and, like, magical street lamps, which... Yeah, <laughs> if he touches the street, la- street lamp, he yeah. starts singing. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, like they, they set this, like, scene, and there's, and like, fairy this, like, this street lamp, I'm like, they're gonna sing. Like, they're gonna sing around that street lamp. You know, like, I'm calling right now, like, sure enough, you know, ding, ding, ding. like, and, like, just on cue, like, they burst into <laughs> the song. And, but... In the end, you know, like, the movie sort of, like, focuses on, like, she wants to make it as an actress, and, like, he wants to open up a jazz club, a successful jazz club, you know, in New- in Hollywood. It has to be at the specific place. And, um... I've been biting my fist over here, because you, you, I... You've already said your last. No, I know, but I just, I can't, I can't talk about how much I loved this movie. I would, I wanted to see this movie. Like, and it, I'm a cold-hearted, bitter fucking biatch. Who's like, like it, it, love sucks. It doesn't exist. Me, 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 me. And this movie gave me owie feels in my heart. Yeah, like, and it was, like, it was, I think it was, like, what I will also say about this movie, like, uh, um, the John Legend is in this movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Otherwise known as Arthur the Yard Burke. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> you seen, like, getting that going yeah. on the internet. Oh, man. Good pull. He's clutching his fist right now. <laughs> so hard. Um... And um, uh, Ryan Gosling had to learn the piano for this movie. He is a fantastic actor. So he does have a musical background, but he had to learn piano for this movie. And so what he did is in pre-production, even though all the piano parts were recorded, like so the music that you're actually hearing is being recorded by like whoever it was, Justin Phillips or whoever. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryan Gosling did um, two days a week, or two day, two hours a week, six days. Two hours a week, six days a week, or whatever. Six days, two hours. Yeah, 12 hours a week. Yeah, of piano lessons. Wow. And all of the footage of him playing is actually him. They use no hand doubles, they use no digital wow. production. And there are some extensive like pieces that he's playing. That's fantastic. And John Legend said that he was jealous of like how quick and easy uh, Ryan Gosling picked up the fucking piano. He's one of those really talented people. Well, John Legend. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, and Brian Gosling is just effortlessly. Stinks just Stinks of time. And it's just <clears throat> visually fucking stunning. It was. It was all very, like, timeless. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Hollywood sort of has this sort of quality about it. Um, like, Hollywood itself, like, of just, like, being out of time, out of place from, like, anywhere else. So mm-hmm. they're all wearing suits. You know, they're all wearing dresses. They're okay. all look. Happens. But it was set in present day, and that's what I didn't get because it had this like retro feel, and like all the dresses were really retro. Yeah. And but then they had like a very joke, the joke about the the Priuses when uh, she yeah. had to go get her valet checked, and it's like uh, like a whole box of like Prius keys, and it's like uh, which one did? All right, um, but I think it was a beautiful movie. Beautiful. I definitely wanted to see this movie. For mostly because it looked super whimsical and just fun. Whimsical. So fun. Yeah. yeah. It and just looked like a good, like, old classic movie. My heart. Everything. I'm uh, sorry. Well, yeah, I'm go sorry, ahead. Sorry, your heart. I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but everything, they did everything in the old style of one takes. Yeah. So. Oh, nice. Everything was, like, done, like. It wasn't like a bunch of takes edited together for the songs and the performances. Yeah. It was like hot takes. So like they got it all the right, you know. And I loved that it would go from like these like very beautifully like planned out like musical numbers and then it would just cut right back to like Emma Stone being witty as fuck and like being awkward and yeah. like I love that like a, like her she kind of came out in that character. Yeah. To like where it would bring you back to like okay. And I, I didn't talk enough about Emma Stone in this movie, but, like, she did a great job 
so bad. Portraying a <laughs> shitty actress. Yes. Like, she... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Emma Stone is, without a doubt, like, a talented actress, but she's going through review after, like, uh, audition after audition. And, you know, like, facing a constant rejection. And there's this one point where, like, she gets a call back. And to do, like, um... Kind of this, uh, sort of, um, Sharon Stone, sort of, uh, what's that teacher movie, um, Gangster's Paradise? Oh, uh, Dangerous Minds. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, where she's doing, like, Dangerous Minds, sort <laughs> of, uh, That's amazing. Yeah. And, um, she, she sort of, like, delivers this line, and, like, it's literally the worst thing I've ever It's, heard. like, one line, and they're, yeah. like, no. And they're, like, yeah, thank you, that's enough. And uh, uh, they're already <laughs> pulling out another, like, dossier or whatever, and, like, She's like trying not to like break out into tears because this is the first callback that she's ever received, and it, it fucking sucked. And I, I remember when that happened, I was like, in all fairness, that was terrible. Y- yes, and yes, like, it was so bad. Like, like she's like, <laughs> yeah, like like smiling and like kind of like trying to like <clears throat> trying to like play it off. And, and the ending is and just is. the ending is so good. But anyways, I, I could just sing the praises all day. All right. Well, that's... Would you guys please watch it together? I think we're... Yeah, we're definitely going to. No, no, no. Yeah. He likes to watch movies without me. Yeah. No. <laughs> Sorry. We should do another Cheers. Because yeah, we're on yeah, the last... Yeah. We're on the last movie. We're on... Yeah. Ting, um, ting. Ting, ting. I probably might not pick that up, but... Just wanna, you, we've been killing happened. the gold slugger. I'm shocked. Yeah, we're... I um, feel great. I, I feel I lovely. Deserve. I feel lovely. It's not bad. It's like... You know you're getting to the bottom of the barrel where you can actually gold flakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I think I've had a couple gold flakes. All right, so I'm going to prefix this with spoilers because I love my last movie. I should say is Moonlight. I unabashedly love this movie, and I feel like I shouldn't spoil it, but I'm gonna spoil it. The only way I can talk about how great it is is to spoil it, and I yes. still think even if I spoil it. People will still love it. Yeah. So okay. people don't get mad at me. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Please. Because we're giving send you fair warning. Your, send all your hate mail to me yes. at uh, email <laughs> <laughs> at <laughs> hotmail.com. Yes. Uh, I know my name's Corey West, but that's that. Uh, that's my alias. Yeah. And just so if you not hate me spoiling this or if you're offended by anything I said tonight, just send me this directly. Yeah. And every every like bad complaint I get, uh, I will send you back 50 bucks in the mail. So yeah. just yeah. send it this email. <laughs> yeah, so if, and this is the last one of the night. So it is, it if, is. if you don't want to hear this, just, just you know, you know stop, stop yeah. listening now. Okay. okay, Corey, take over. So Moonlight is, is a movie. I know nothing about it. It's, it's a movie? Shut up, seriously? I know, and it got nominated as a movie. Um, so, uh, it's a movie about a kid named um, uh, Chiron. Or Sh- Chiron, yeah, I think it's Chiron. Sorry, I had a mm. gold talk. Chiron. Yeah. Um, and it takes place during uh, three aspects of his life. Uh, early on, like, then, like, high school, and, or I think junior high. Don't call me. Little, yeah. middle age, and then, like, an adult, basically. Um. So, part one, it's breaking in three parts. Part one it is called Little, because Chiron's uh, nickname when he was well, smaller was Little. Mm. And uh, basically, so the first part um, about him as a child, his mother, played by um, Naomi Harris, uh, great performance. She is a drug addict, and he basically he doesn't have a father in the picture. Um... And he's a kid that, like, you can tell early on, like, it's kind of a story about he's he's bullied by kids. And he hides kind of, like, almost like in, almost like a crack den. And he's found by, like, this, uh, an, an, uh, a drug dealer named Juan, I do believe it's called, uh, is his name. Played by, uh, again, Marsha Ra Shala Ali. I know I'm butchering his name. Back to the guy who was in Hidden Figures. Marsha Ra. Masara Ali. Okay. So he plays the... Uh, and here's... Okay. So here's how I'm bringing back Hidden Figures and uh, Moonlight to Spider-Man. It's Masha Ali plays Cottonmouth in Luke Cage. Luke Cage is in the Marvel Universe as is Spider-Man. That's my, my Spider-Man connection. 
God. So there, I connected. There you go. I connected movies. Um, <laughs> was there an arrival one? Connection? Yeah, Jeremy yeah. Renner. Oh, okay, right, right, Hawkeye. right. That's right. Um, I didn't we determine that the Hawkeye character was in that movie? Like, yes. not even Jeremy Renner, but the Hawkeye. actual Hawkeye. Anyway, yeah. so uh, <laughs> it's 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 such a great movie. It's a perfect movie. But anyway, um, so he's found in this kind of crack that by one and like. He kind of takes this boy in and kind of, like, uh, like feeds him and becomes, like, you can tell this boy, because his father's not around, becomes, like, his kind of father figure. Like, he teaches him how to swim. Like, he's he's looking out for him, but it, his character, like, is so amazing because he's being this father's kid, but also he's a drug dealer. Um, and so in the first part of this movie, because it's breaking three parts, um... He becomes his father figure for this kid, but then the kind of major dilemma is that, like, he's also a drug dealer, and he sells drugs to, like, this kid, Little, Chiron's, uh, mother. And, like, they, there's a there's a great scene with him and, uh, uh sorry, uh, Naomi Harris, um, character's named Paula, and that's Chiron's mother. And there's hmm. this great thing where, like, he kind of attacks her, like, because he's been taking care of this kid, and, like, uh... He's, like, basically attacks her on the fact that she's not being a great mother. And then she basically throws it in his face, being like, well, you're, like, you're a drug dealer. You've got me hooked on drugs. What do you have? Like, you can't say anything. Yeah. So right. his character so... Yeah. yeah, and his, his character is amazing, like, has to balance this. And it's just, it's such, like, a drug dealer is always, like, such a one-dimensional character. But he's amazing in this role, like, trying to be this father figure to Sharon. And, like, uh, and also be this drug dealer character. Uh, eventually, so part one leads to Sharon basically finding out, like, basically he sells drugs to his mom and kind of, like, breaking almost, like, Juan's heart being, like, like, you're part of the problem. Like, and so this father figure, like, Sharon, who's guy, a kid who's taken this guy in, except the father he never had, ends up hurting him. So that's kind of the end of part one. Oh, and I should say, Janelle Monet. Also, yeah, yes, yes. Back in this movie, she plays one's um, uh, like girlfriend in this movie. So ah. they basically take Chiron in, like when he has to eat or if he has to sleep there and stuff like that. So and she does an amazing performance in this as well. So that's kind of in Layman's terms. Part one, part two is he's a little bit older. He's in like I think high school. I feel like I may be watching that maybe junior high, but he's older, uh, older kid. Uh, and this kind of like focuses more on him and. In his relationship with uh, his friend named Kevin. And I will say in part two, spoilers. Spoiler uh, alert. Uh, Jennifer Monet's character is uh, Teresa. She's still in the picture, but Juan has died. He was a drug dealer and he was killed. So he, that character's out, but he still kind of goes to Teresa's place. And like when he needs to play safe, he needs to play safe. But uh, his mother has got worse into drugs at this point, Paula. Um, but, and like, you can tell in the first two parts he's, like, different from other kids and he's kind of coming to realizations. So, basically, part two, for the most part, comes down to um, he, uh, him and his friend Kevin, basically, they're, they're very close. They go to the beach one day and they kiss and basically they do some hand stuff. So, oh. it comes out that, yeah, hand Sharon stuff. Is, yeah, so Kevin and Sharon, they kind so of come to this thing. thing. Like, yeah, but they... It basically is saying, like, oh, you remember how this kid was picked on by other boys? And he was kind of picked on because he was different and, like, kind of... Yeah. Like, and it, it's 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 really, really well done how he's... Basically, he is a gay character, but, like, he doesn't know it himself early on. It's just, like, he's coming to terms with it. And, like, and even, like, he's different in a, a way that, like, kids don't necessarily know what he is, but they pick on him for it. Like, it's mm. like, like this kid somehow is different, so we Makes hate sense. different. Like, yeah. yeah, you know, and it's, so basically, like I said, him and this character, Kevin, they kind of kiss and they do some hand stuff, like I said. I love that uh, you're saying hand stuff. I know, And you're no, just no, not no. straight up saying hand jobs. Yeah, yeah, that's what, it. what other kids? Like don't that? say and stuff. No, I know. Yeah, there's no nice stuff, guys. I guess. Is there butt stuff? Yeah, <laughs> there's no butt stuff. <laughs> um, so anyway, so this is, <laughs> so it kind of, in a weird way, it mirrors, like, this is the great, this is the great part of the movie is that somehow it mirrors, like, 
he's kind of a closed off kid and he's bullied and stuff like that. And the first, the first part of this movie, he finds this drug dealer, but like he never had a father figure. So it's like he lets this guy in to be like, be my father figure. The second mm-hmm. part's like he's letting himself be vulnerable, being like, and realizing like I am like I'm a, I'm gay um, with this guy. So this is where they pull the rug from under you. There, there's this one kid that's constantly bullying him. I can't remember the kid's name, but. As this kind of initiation thing for this guy, Kevin, who he kissed, who, like, nobody knows they're here or whatever. But he basically forces this Kevin kid to be like, hey, when Chiron comes around, uh, like, you gotta, you punch him. Like, punch him and knock him down. Mm. Um, and he does so, after having this kiss and all this stuff, he basically punches Chiron uh, as, like, this kind of thing to, like... To, like, get into it with the cool Yeah, beer. kind of like that. So, and... Basically, he's t- he punches him and knocks him out. He's just like he's basically saying like, "Stay down, like it's over, blah blah." And Charon refuses. So this Kevin kid keeps punching him, punching him, basically punching him until he can't get up. Mm. So, in a weird way, like the Chiron's been basically like he just has been super vulnerable. This guy being like and realize he was gay, and then like now he has this guy like beating the shit out of him. Mm. But anyway, so it kind of turns around. He gets beat up, and then it goes on and like. This kid's in class, and he doesn't go after Kevin, but he goes after the bully who kind of made him do it. Like, he goes in the class and, like, hits him with a chair and basically messes him up. And that end result shows Siron go, uh, si- uh, go to jail. And that's the end of part two, basically. So when you get to part three, it's Siron much older, um, and he's a drug dealer now. It's kind of thing he's here. Sarala is playing... Well, Amara Sarala is dead now. Like that, he was dead. Sorry, I, I oh, think sorry. I said that, but he was dead in part two. Like he, he, you don't see it, but between part one and part two, he was, he was murdered. Father, father figure. Yeah. He wasn't his father. So basically, he's become the thing that he kind of turned against that character. Yeah. He's like now he's a drug dealer, but now he's like he's been hurt so many times and he's never had any breaks that you and like I I can't stress enough how Moonlight is like I said a perfect movie but it's subtle it never hits you over the head with it but it it makes you think like and makes you put you on the path to like mm. describe it so when you get to the third point you realize this guy's been hurt so many times like he's trusted like basically the biggest thing probably of his life is that he realized he was gay and then the guy yeah. that he found this out with like beat him like yeah. in a weird way to like get yeah, in with another fucked. crowd and, like, before that, he basically never had a father figure. And the one father figure he had, he realized, was, like, a drug dealer and, like, ruined his mom. So, it's, like, yeah. so, in like, literally, like, it never really comes out and says, but it makes you feel, like, it's just, like, he's made himself, un- like, you can't touch him now. Like, if you see him, he's, like, jacked. And he's scary. Like, he's the drug dealer. Like, he's just, like, nobody's going to bully him because nobody wants to go close to him because he's a scary person. Because he might have killed him. Yeah, exactly. And, like, now he's buff. And it's, like, I've been picked on all my life. Now I, like, I mean, people are scared to fight me. He becomes yeah. a thing that's, like, you can't hurt me anymore because you're scared of me. Like, right. he like becomes. Yeah, basically. So, it, and it does. Yeah. <laughs> but it does God. juxtapose, like. The kind of... Being gangster means you never have to see your son. Yeah, but it's like... So, and I, I will I will, I will, will definitely say, like, it's 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 kind of, like, plays that thing where it's like, in the African-American community, like, being gay is... Yeah. Like, you, you're just not gay. Like It's, it's, it's just like, like a double negative. Like, like, yeah. Not only is it, like, hard to be, like, gay and, like, be a man, like... Yeah. yeah but it's doubly hard to be gay and African-American. Yeah, exactly, because it's... Culture. it's and, and, and they play that so perfectly. So, like I said, in the third act, he's... He's this hardened man who's, like, built this persona so nobody can ever hurt him again. Yeah. So, it, it plays well. Like, he's a drug dealer, and then finally he goes to see his mother, and his mother is, like, in rehab, and she's clean. And they have an amazing scene where they're just, like... It's just basically... Like, just fight between... Kind of fight between them, but he eventually begrudgingly, like, says, like, I forgive you for what you were. Like, you were a drug addict. You ruined my life. Yeah. Like, you, you weren't the mother that I needed, and I had nobody. And then she's basically like, well, I was an addict. Like, and it's this great scene. And then, so basically the Kevin character, who you originally had, like... Like, the... Yeah. Like, came out, like, basically, was like, had the realization, I'm experience. gay. Basically, they they talk on the phone, and Kevin's kind of like, well, I'm in Miami, come see me, like, I'm sorry for 
what happened and blah, blah, blah. So he does. And then when they meet, it's kind of weird because, like, Kevin was able to kind of, like, and it, like I said, doesn't hit you over the head with it, but basically comes to terms with, like, I'm a gay man. I went to Miami. I'm a server here, yeah. like, now in Miami. I was able to live my life As and, like, man. slowly come to it. We're, like... He he finally sees Chiron, who's now going for another alias. Like he likes to call himself Black at this point, um, and that's kind of a thing because every chapter is named after kind of a nickname. Like the right. first chapter is called Little when he's little, and yeah. the second chapter is called Chiron, who which is his name, and the third chapter is called Black, and that's like the persona that the drug dealing persona uh-huh. that he came across. Get on up does that with the the movie the biopic about uh, Ray Charles. Oh really? Yes, <laughs> like there's some chapters named like Mister Dynamite and like, oh, based yeah. on like you know, oh, that meant, yeah, parts of his career. Yeah, going. Uh, but yeah, so uh, so he kind of built this persona, this mean like scary persona, and so when he goes to see Kevin, Kevin's almost like taken back, being like, "Who is like, this man?" Come basically like, "What are you now?" Where Kevin's like kind of been able to be who he is yeah. inside. And they, they kind of, it's kind of a back and forth and blah, blah, blah. But finally, like, they kind of, I don't want too much, but they kind of reconnect. And, like, even Chiron is like, like, I've loved you since this happened. Ew! Like, I love you since this happened. I never met a guy or a girl since then, but, like, I changed, blah, blah, blah. And, like, it's kind of like this, the movie, like, that, and, like I said before, it, it's perfect. The way it's filmed, the colors they use, like... The sadness, like, and it's nice. like, it's so sad, but it's, the sadness of it is never extremely in your face. It builds up in you, like, slowly, right. like, you don't even know, like, yeah. they're putting in, it's, and then by the end, it's like, the story is about this kid who never had anybody, and anybody who he actually opened himself up to, and was betrayed vulnerable him. to, betrayed him, and finally in the end, it's like, basically the end of the movie is him and this Kevin, like, the reconnect, and they're in a loving embrace, and it just gives, and that's literally the end. It kind of ends, and then it's like maybe this character who's been so messed over his whole life has finally arrived. Found peace. Yeah, peace. Yeah, and like somebody loves him who he can be open with, who's not gonna, even though this one character has sent him back, but he's found like the Safe. love that he's looking for. Yeah. Maybe he can be himself. And that is a movie, and it, um, it, it is one of the most perfect movies from every aspect, music wise. Acting wise, like, and I, um, uh, I'm gonna push it, Mashar, Shala, whatever, Ali. You know what's funny? He should be, he should win. He's nominated best. for best actor. He's he got best supporting. What? Oh, he's best supporting? Yeah. Well, he's, Cause he's only in the first part of it, but like. So not only is his name Mah- Mahersh- Mahershala, mm. it's Mahershala Hashbaz. Oh, wow. And he just like, cut it off? Like, it's, mm. it's even longer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, Holy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, looking at him. Like, That's a oh, hard one. man. Yeah. That hurts my heart. But I will say Moonlight is from top, like, the, like, and it's weird because when you feel it to your subject matter, I find movies like that have drag. This movie doesn't drag. It's That's good. Visually is so beautiful. The music is perfect. Like, it is as close to a pers- perfect movie that I've seen. Like, Aww. and it's am- it's amazing. And it's, it's so, I can't explain how subtle it is without, but it, it just invokes such big emotions. Like, right. it's insane, but it's not like, it's not one of those movies like, feel sad. It's like, yeah. it builds your sadness up in you. But it also, weirdly, as negative as the movie is, it kind of is, it leaves you with, like, hope and sadness. Yeah. It's such a perfect balance. Like, yeah. it's amazing. That's all I No, that me. sounds fucking amazing. Yeah. So, I Ow. Moonlight <laughs> is my top. Like, that's the one that topped it, and I I think it really should win an Oscar. That being said, I feel like the Oscar voting committee is white, older males, and an all-black cast that mm-hmm. deals with homosexuality is going to turn a blind eye to it, but, I mean... It should well, that, That's what, but like the Oscars in my mind don't mean shit. Like it's such a perfect, especially movie. considering, especially considering like the, the the feedback that they had from like previous, like the last year I think it was, Oscar's so white. Yeah, you know, like uh, I, I think the diversity of the Best Picture nominees sort of like reflects that. Like I, to be honest, I actually don't even know who the best uh, best actor nominees are, but um, yeah, I'll pull them up. 
Yeah, that's I I feel like Dev Patel, for example, is like a like a good nominee for best actor. Yeah, not only because he's a diversity uh, thing, but also because like he's a great actor. Well, he's a great actor, but he's also like you know it's like it's like well he's not like an old white man. Yeah, like, I don't think Tom Hanks is gonna win it for Sully. <coughs> I mean, like yeah, we all know Tom Hanks is a great actor. But, like yeah. he doesn't need another Oscar on his shelf. Yeah, we all know Denzel Washington is a great actor. He's already got like two Oscars <coughs> on his shelf. Yeah. yeah. At least. Yeah. So, I mean, like, but, like, Depp Patel, like, I feel like he's a shooting because, like, he's going to plug in, like, it's a great spot for him to plug in, like, his his charity. Um, oh, yeah. Or whatever. Which so. is fine, but I, I feel like Moonlight, as well, is, like, they, I don't, it's weird because I don't think they have a, like, leading actor in a weird really? way. Because well, it's three, is... it's three characters playing the Shiro. Oh, like, okay. little, older, and, like, adult. Like, so... So really, it's... it goes by screen time. It, yeah. it doesn't. And I know. Um, I'm just gonna call him Ali because I butchered his name all night, all night long. I know he's up for best supporting actor. But another funny thing is that the uh, earlier movie I reviewed, um, Hell in High Water. Hmm. I know that uh, Jeff Bridges and Ben Foster are both nominated for supporting actor because of I guess screen time. Like, sure. and I would really say Jeff Bridges is like he's in. I would see. I see him as the like the the main actor of that movie. Yeah. But I, I guess on screen time, like, probably Chris Pine is... But anyway. Technically, yeah. yeah. So, Moonlight. Yeah, but Jen, <laughs> we didn't get your opinion on if you were watching that. Or, I, like, your I notes. Would, okay. okay. My notes. I kind of stopped because you were telling a really good, vivid story of it, so I kind of stopped taking notes. Um, it sounds like a fantastic story. I was a little disappointed there was no butt stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> just hand just, stuff. Just hands. Get, Maybe get, the best stuff comes later. After ocean. the credits. Yeah. No, I. No, I'm kidding. It sounds like an amazing, amazing movie. I probably wouldn't watch it because it sounds so dreadfully real and sad that it would really affect me, and I can't take that kind of movie. That like, I was just thinking before you talked. I was like, if she says no after Corey pouring his heart out about this movie, I, and that's no. my problem. You know how I like movies really affect me in the yeah. negative. If it's but sad, I, it takes if I, me but days it's, to it's get very over. sad. This guy's beat down, but I feel like at the end you're somehow you're sad, but there's a weird. Do you there's a weird eight hope. Pounds? Yeah, this is no eight pounds. pounds. Seven pounds. This is no. This is week. this is not and like that. I will say seven days or a pound. I will say this. It does leave you with like a very like maybe he will be loved at the end. So I. Mm. But anyway, here's the thing. So, so I don't like. I sounds like a. Oh, really? I would love to watch it, <laughs> yeah. but I would be afraid that I would find it too uh-huh. emotionally draining because I'm. Mm-hmm. I'm a pretty delicate, sensitive flower. All right. Well, I, so, my, oh my top God. movie got a lot I am so sorry for you because you, like, you yeah. sold me on that. No. I'm sold on I'm it. I'm sold on it. I'm not, I'm not unsold on it. I just don't. It's kind of like the few movies I've watched that have been, like, too close to the truth in real people's lives. It, they just. Too I don't, much. I don't think I can handle it. But I will I say also kind of, on this, which is, like, and I think I'm, I, I lean on the, um, the fact that he's coming in terms with being homosexual in it, but I feel like that shouldn't be the main. No, and that's what I'm going. But that's it's not like, the main but no, 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 no. But it's like it's such a beautiful movie, and it's like it's that that is a big part of it. <laughs> what? Look at what she's doing. Uh, nobody can see what she. Okay, I'm just gonna take this away. Take I'm pouring my heart out about this movie. Oh, I need to get emotional. Calm down. Uh, so it's basically. I, I just think like. It's mm. such a beautiful movie about it. It's basically just a man coming to terms with everything that's messed him over and that to come in terms with like, I just want somebody to love me and maybe, and that's, a, and at the end, maybe I found that person. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Ow. This I would see it. it. See, I, I would, I Thank would you, want yeah. to see it. I'm not saying I don't want to see it. I do. Okay. So she does. I you just, just don't know if you can see it. Sad movies, they really like, I, I Really, no. Jen. Actually, well, here's a good question. I mean, what after hearing all of these, mm-hmm. which if you had to pick one? Oh yeah, that's good. Honestly, my that line movie really the way you explained it, like I I heard good things about it, but like the way you explained it, like I really like that. So you pick Lion? No, I'm I'm really beating around the bush here. 
I don't know. Because I really want to see hidden figures, which I will see. Of course. Yeah. Then this Moonlight movie, I do really want to see it, but I'm just like, sad movies, man. Honestly, the way Corey described Moonlight, and I mean, he's very passionate about movies, so mm -hmm. he's like, he's like yeah. passionate, bad or yeah. good. Sure. So when he's like that passionate and like talks about it and like chokes up a little bit, I'm like, Ow. Jeez, Louise. yeah, I might like, get some after this movie. <laughs> okay. So, okay, okay. No, so was Moonlight. Really Maybe you should see That's Moonlight. Not, do not apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and he's me with the door open. He so. totally is. That's all right. It's all right. You gotta Sorry, do what you gotta everybody. do. Um. So I would. <laughs> the one I never heard anything about Moonlight. So the yeah. fact that it sounds so fantastic would probably be my top choice. There you go. See, there you go. Wow. See, it started off kind of shaky there. But you're really your thing is is just like you want to see it, but you just don't know if you can handle it like, because I, it's I so can't emotional. Handle sad movies. I can't. So, so uh, we're under agreement that Manchester. No, no. Okay, can <laughs> we bring? Okay, okay hang on a second. Movie, hang on. Just let's know. just Affleck, let me take. Let me just give me a second here. So. Don't hate us. Best actor Netflix. nominees oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. are Andrew Garfield, Hacksaw Ridge, of course. Ryan Gosling, La La Land, of course. Denzel Washington fences. No, don't give it to him. Um, uh, Casey Affleck, no, Manchester no, by the no, Sea, no. and Viggo Mortensen for oh, Captain, Captain Fantastic, Fantastic, which I haven't seen. Okay, that was Can, I... Captain Fantastic. Captain Fantastic is an amazing movie. If I loved anything in the entire world. As much as Viggo Mortensen loves showing his penis off in the movie. Yes. Okay, well, now I'm in. Yeah. I Full would, frontal. Like, my sister's favorite oh, yeah. actress. Is it, is it, <laughs> my sister's it, favorite it, actress. Yeah. How big was it, Corey? Stop me. Wait. Stop, stop me. Have you not seen Eastern Promises? No. Like, he just shows his penis. I don't know. <laughs> Eastern Promises. Okay, but, okay, like, I do want to... I mean, on the, on, I don't know, it's, it's a penis that's... Classic? It, well, it is flaccid, but it's... I don't really know what flaccid means. Flaccid. Okay. Let's talk about the aspects of movies that we want to spoil. Anyway, go. Yeah, we'll exactly. Yeah, yeah. We're, this is the spoiler round of... Like the real spoiler. Like, Even though I spoiled Mid Moonlight like crazy. Anyway. We gave warnings. Yeah. But the spoiler in Manchester by the Sea, which was the scene that I cried in. So the tragedy that Casey Affleck's character goes through, like from his past, is, is that he was married with a wife, which was Michelle Williams who was pretty good. She wasn't in it a lot, though. Yeah. But anyway, um, he had a wife, and he had three kids. And he got drunk one night and left the fire on. Uh, and went, walked out to, like, the gas station to get more alcohol. Yeah. And he that comes alcohol. home to his house on fire. Yeah. And them taking his wife away in an ambulance. And then it cuts to the next morning where they're cleaning up the fire. Yeah, all and they're day. finding his dead children. Oh yeah, why didn't he just kill him? So that's yeah. the part that like he basically wanted. He to. broke down, yeah. and I lost it. Yeah. Like because the whole the whole movie he's very one note, yeah. very monotone, and very like to why, he's just not. Why would you? Why would you want to live after? Like I mean, like you should. Because you have like you should. Your character should kill himself. Like yeah. and oh, here's the other kicker. He did try to kill himself when he was being questioned by the police. So he was being questioned by the police, and he took a gun, and he went to shoot himself, but they, like, stopped him. Uh, so, yeah. That scene... Try it again, buddy. Come on. That yeah. scene was fucking rough. Try it. Try it. Put some rocks in your pockets and walk in the ocean. Or, you live two hours in the sea, you know. Yeah. <laughs> two hours, That's two it. And it was perfect if his oh name was Manchester. They and talk about it so much, though. By the sea. Because the whole thing was like, oh, <laughs> is the kid going to come live with me in Boston, or am I going to move to Manchester? And they kept talking about the distance, and he's like, oh, man, no, my life's here. I have my friends here, and that's a two-hour drive. Yeah, that's it. He's just like, also, my, my, my kid's dying in a fire was pretty bad, but also, not as bad as a two-hour drive, yeah, two drive to Boston. I mean, like, I mean, like, also, like, why the fuck is this man being considered for, like, fatherhood at all, like, <laughs> he, lost, he like he left. He lost. Know, that's the god due, due to his own negligence. Yeah, you know, like, it's like like you are not fit to. If like, those kids lived through that fire, you yeah. would never see them again. Yeah. Like, you are not fit to like rape any of those. Like, yeah, like I mean, just, none of us have kids, so we probably shouldn't judge. But I feel like uh, we. But, but honest to God, like I, I would not murder. Like I'm not minus three kids though. Which he is. Yeah, that <laughs> makes me. But because I didn't. Way better. I didn't realize that. 
when like when there's a house fire or whatever, you can still find bodies. Like I always just assume that it would be like nothing there. If it doesn't burn that hot, it might burn out before. Like you would die of smoke. It was so well, I mean, like, oh, so like, sad. Degrees of like heat to like burn bones or whatever. So like when you see that scene, you then you're then like, okay, well I kind of get why you're like so fucking literally numb and nothing. Because you lost everything. Yeah. And then he, when he comes back, Michelle Williams has a new husband and a new oh, baby. Oh, she lives? And a new baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she survived. Or whatever. So, like, she it's kind of fucked. Hmm. It's kind of fucked up. But Fences was like, I mean, one of the spoilers that I didn't mention was that he actually had an affair and got a, a woman pregnant and actually ended up having a kid, a baby daughter, oh. with another woman. No, that's and not, then the one, just wait. I mean, I expected that, you know. And then the woman dies in childbirth, and so he's left with the baby and he comes home to Viola Davis and he's like, oh man, I fucked up, I have a kid. Can you look after it? And she says yes. And it's a baby. And the Can baby I say, when she says America. yes, is she crying uncontrollably? Is no, the, uh, the crying uncontrollably scene is when she finds sick. out that he was having an affair. That's okay. when the crying when scene happens. When her nose ejects like all Because the, she was essentially the, just like, mucus. you're my husband, I'm going to stick with you no matter what. And like, there's a point where she's like, she I'm going to take care of this child, and I will be a mom to this child, but you do not have me anymore. Huh. And they like they stay together, but they're not really together. Really, it's almost like they put up. Um, it's almost like they put up um, theoretical fences. Yeah, oh. the oh. fences thing <laughs> came because the whole movie was like you have to build a fence around it, like a physical fence around the house, and he gets mad at the son. He's like, you gotta go work on the fence and stop playing football. <laughs> and that was a terrible Denzel Washington. No, no, no. no that was, that that was pitch me away. perfect. That but was, when she just, finds out that he's having the affair... Like, Remind the Titans all over again. When, he, when she finds out he's having the affair, she is like, she's really emotional. She runs out and she like kind of leans on the fence. It breaks it all down? No, it doesn't. It stayed up. We are so, so deep drunk. in the gold slogger. Right I now. know. The gold, gold slogger is almost gone. Yeah. I will say, like, and another thing I want to bring up is early on, you're just like, I'm taking this bottle home, by the way. And we're just like, like, yeah, totally. The There's going to be nothing left in the bottle. Uh, so I guess we have to wind this down, but I just like to say, spoilers for Hell or High Water, because I have <laughs> such great okay. feelings. Oh, okay. spoilers at, the end of the at this point, this is like a two hour podcast. I'm taking yeah. out syllables. I'm sorry, world. Um, Internet. Uh, I don't even want to say, like, okay, Hell or Water is perfect because it seems very generic, like I said earlier. But, like, if I'm going to spoil the territory, they play with um, kind of subjects like. Um, <sighs> fuck. <laughs> 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 um, I know. Uh, the brothers, so it seems like the brothers just ragtag guys uh, robbing banks, but it comes down to the fact that Chris Pine's character. Um, has never really, like, he has a pretty clean record. Like, he's been kind of straight-laced. But you find out that, like, Chris Pine and Ben, um... Foster. Foster, thank you, thank you. Ben Foster's uh, mother died recently. And they have a ranch. And the ranch that they have, uh, is in almost for, uh, for, foreclosure from the bank. Which is, like, and so the bank's gonna take the property. But what... And also, but the property has just been found out that has oil underneath it. So yeah, it's worth oil. Than but oil. basically they have no money from it left. So the bank is like literally like trying to take their money basically. Yes. Being like, oh, you're behind on your foreclosure and your mom just died. Okay, if you don't pay X amount of dollars off in this time frame, we gonna, we're going to take your house yeah. or your ranch and they know there's oil on it. Yeah. So basically what happens is Ben Foster and... And Chris Pine, uh, Pine are robbing the bank that's going to foreclose. They're robbing branches of it, small uh, branches, taking money. Uh, they take the money. They go to casinos. They pretend like they gamble. They gamble a little bit, but then cash out that money, get a check, and take it as, like, deposits yeah. on the mortgage. Right. So it's like... So they're using the, the casinos to sort of, like, uh, launder, launder the, money. the money. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So... And you find out that the um, uh, the Ben Foster character had killed their abusive father when they were younger. So he's kind of messed up. Like, he's the loose yeah. cannon. So, it's typical Ben Foster. Yeah, the exactly. Mechanic, it's perfect Ben Foster. Yeah. Angel, free Three Angel. days a night. Um, so basically, it comes down to the fact that Chris... Um, Pine. 
Chris Pine is like he has two sons and a like a he's divorced from his wife or separated. And basically what they're trying to do is pay the ranch off. Um and he's trying to get money for like his kids and stuff like that. But he's like he's the thinker and Ben Foster's more of the hothead. So anyway, when I said they they, they robbed the, the bank that has a bunch of people in it, they do that, but they get chased by some of the locals and then the cops get called in and they're like they're not really gonna like, they can't really sneak away. They have a backup car, but Ben Foster basically, like, okay, here's the deal. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to, like, create a diversion. The cops are going to chase me. You're going to get away the money. You do, you pay off the rest of, like, the mortgage or, or whatever. Um, so he goes up in the hills. He has a bunch of hicks with guns chasing him. And, like, <laughs> the cops, and they track him to, like, Ben Foster's and, like, a mountain almost like a yeah. weird kind of thing and he he takes a sniper rifle climbs up the mountain so the cops show up so Jeff Bridges and uh, Gil Birmingham show up and this is kind of like where it's perfect in the way that they there's no music cues it's just like things happening like holy shit so yeah. basically you see this relationship with like uh, Jeff Bridges and Gil Birmingham the whole sh- uh, show so they're setting up like Cop cars to be like, okay, how are we going to get this guy down? He has the advantage. And they're talking. And out of nowhere, Gil Birmingham is shot, like, through the eye and killed. Oh, him. shit. Like, just, and it's weird because the Jeff Bridges character has very much been, like, running him down and, like, oh, you're yeah, whatever. Yeah, but then you see, voice. like, he's like, holy shit, like, oh, my God. And you see the emotions, like, he actually cared for this guy. So I think, like, so Jeff Bridges gets, like, just a local kind of hick to take him up the, this hill, like, because, you know... Uh, ben Foster's kind of got the high ground, so yeah. he gets higher than him, and he basically snipes Ben Foster, kills him. Uh, that being said, the plan works that Chris, Chris Pine get, goes to the casino. Like get, his brother, like they have this moment where it's like basically Ben Foster's like, "I'm taking the bullet for this," and he, they kind of understand that he's gonna die. Like yeah. he's just gonna, mm. but he's like, "I'm fucked up. I killed my dad. Like I'm, yeah. I've never been anything good. Like I'm just." Whatever. Move back to live for him. So Chris Pine is basically like he's he's never had a bad record. So it basically like he takes the money, he goes to a casino, and it's the last bit of money they need to take the the the, the, the pie at the mortgage. Yeah. Um. So while he's at the casino, kind of gambling away, getting thing, he sees the news and it's like, oh, his brother got shot. Like, yeah. So that's when he realizes it. So now you have these two characters because leftovers Jeff Bridges and Chris Pine, and like. Jeff Bridges lost a partner. Chris Pine lost his brother. So, whatever. Everything happens. Uh, Jeff Bridges, like I said, is close to retirement. He retires. And then he's fine. But he's, like, pushing. He goes to the bank. And he's kind of like, I have this guy. I know this guy. He seems squeaky clean, like Chris Pine. But we feel like he stole money from your banks. Um, and it feels like he's in the way Scott Free. But at that, this point, the banks won't help the police. They're like, no, no. He's fine. He has a clean record. Because they're like... Whatever money they lost in the robbery, they've made up in. They've insurance. made up. They they've made up from the fact that Chris Pine's character now is banking all this oil money through their bank. So like we're not gonna ra- like even though he robbed this bank, yeah. the money they make off him from this oil thing, they're just like no, we're like Excuse. we're not gonna we're not gonna help the police in this situation. Yeah. So basically, it's it. Jeff Bridges has to retire. He retires, and he shows up at Chris Pine's ranch. And there's this amazing uh, moment. This is the end. And it's uh, like, and it's these two guys that are just like passively, aggressively saying to each other, I want to kill you. Yeah. Like, it's like Jeff Bridges shows up and is like, yeah, like, I don't believe all these things. Like, I think you were working with your brother and you were this mastermind about this thing. And Chris Pine basically saying like, no, I'm just saying, yeah, basically you can't prove it. Like, I'm literally doing this to like... My family's never had money, and this is America. And he's like, rich people inherit, their kids are rich, and their grandkids are rich. And, like, that's how America works. He's like, I, like, he's like, I'm just happy that I had a piece of land that now my kids are rich, and their kids will be rich, and I was never rich. So he's, like, kind of justifying his action about saying he did it. Yeah. And they have this big, and it's almost so much that, like, you feel like Jeff Bridges is going to kill him. Yeah. Like, but even they're being very passive aggressive, and then all of a sudden, like, his ex wife shows up with their two kids. And you find out, like, Chris Pine's character is there fixing things on the ranch, but he has taken, he hasn't taken a dime from this. Like, oh. he signed everything over to his kids because he wants his kids to be well off. And he's like, no, I live in town, I don't live here, I, I, I 
have no part of this ranch. I'm just a guy trying to like survive. And then it, it movie basically ends with them being like, with Jeff Bridges being like, okay, cool. I'll find out where you really live, and maybe we'll have a talk. Being like, maybe I'll come and I'll try to kill you. And then Chris Pine's like, yeah, cool. I'll be waiting for you. So if you yeah. try to come kill I'll me, I'll you. kill you. And that's the end of the movie. And it's really? very like it's so I'm tense, curious. but it's such a perfect thing. And like movies would like movies just will always show that being like there'll be a revenge scene, there'll be a big shootout. But it's just like it's such a, a, a great movie where it like builds up and. It, it's messed up and it's very subtle, but then at the very end, it's it's like so tense, being like, "I want to kill you," yeah. and the other guy's like, "I want to kill you," and they have this big kind of scene, being like, "Well, we're gonna we try kill to kill each, each other. other at some point," yeah. Yeah. and that's it. And that's that's kind of cool, though. I like it's that. It's amazing. Like it's such a good movie, and it's. Do you it, think there'll be like a sequel? No, no I think no, that's it. No. Yeah, I don't. It wouldn't. They work should just thing. leave it, they, they and it, it and it works out well. Like and yeah. well, I I recommend if you watch it, which you should. You'll see it's just like, it's the perfect ending. It's just like, it's two guys that like hate. I think I'm going to watch all these movies now. They all sound actually I mean, pretty good. Yeah. I, I think too as well. Even sense. if you don't want to see them, I think we give you a good rundown of all of them. That's true. Um, so I think I should copy one of my favorite podcasts. And if you made it through this, because it's going to be very long, tweet a hashtag. Yes. But we need to think of a hashtag. Hashtag yes. Spider Man for the Oscars. Yeah. Hashtag Spider Man Oscars. Hashtag, hashtag Oscar says Spider Man. Yeah. Yes. Hashtag Oscar so Spider Man. So? so? Or Wait, says. A... Says. Uh, We're all incredibly intoxicated. We're a gold slogger. <laughs> during last year, Oscar said white. Yes, Oscar so Spider Man. Awesome. Okay, so hashtag Oscar so Spider Man. If you made it through this entire thing, um, so thank you guys for doing this and getting drunk with me, talking about movies. And I also want to say thanks, Corey, for the name because you came up with the name of this podcast. Thank you, thank you. Yes. So now is your chance to take credit. I will. Um, <laughs> so intoxicated <laughs> is my creation, but no, that's uh, yeah, Corey West Productions. I just hope you guys like it, and if you don't, uh, then Sarah S- came up with it. And, and also send, send your hate mail to. to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, if you don't like the name of the podcast and you have any concerns about it, send me your concerns to <laughs> at hotmail dot com. Thank you very much. And that's it. Let's bring it in for one more cheers. One more cheers, and we're gonna finish off this bottle and go the fuck home. Gross. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.